Hello everybody. Today what we're going to be looking at is linear equations and the real world context. So let's just jump in look at some of these word problems. So it says Jackson scored 98%, 87%, 92%, and 92% on his first four math tests. What score must he earn on the fifth test to have an average of 63% in the class? So what we want to do, this is an average problem. So to find average, we take up all the scores and divide it by the total. So, so far we know he got a 98, he got an 87, he got a 92, another 92, and it says, what does he need to get on his fifth test? We don't know what he's going to get, so we're going to put X. And to find average, what we do is we divide by 5. And he wants his average to be 93%. So this is how we set these ones up. So the first thing what we're going to do is um, I'm going to add up all the test scores. So I'm going to have 98 plus 87 plus 92 plus another 92, and that's going to give me 369. So I'm going to have 369 plus x all over 5 is equal to 93. So we're trying to get x by itself, so what I'm going to do is get rid of that denominator by multiplying both sides by 5. These are going to cancel, and I'm going to be left with 369 plus x is equal to 93 times 5, which is... 465. And now all I'm going to do is minus 369 from both sides. And that means we're going to get x equals 96. So this student must, Jackson must get a 96 on the next test to have an average of 93%. Now h problems are going to be popping up all the time. They're a little tricky but this is the general gist of it. One person is always going to have their age manipulated. It's going to say something like um, two times this person's age or ten less than this person's age, um, something like that. So, And then one person whose age is not going to be affected. So let me t uh, show you what I mean by that. It says, Michaela's age is ten years greater than half of Jackson's. Well, Jackson's age is not being manipulated. It's being compared to. So we're going to have his age, excuse me, not Jackson, Jake. So Jake's age is just going to be X. Now, Michaela's age, that's what we're going to mess around with. So it says Michaela's age is 10 years greater than half of Jackson's. So if we take half of Jackson's and Michaela's age is 10 years greater than half of Jackson's. So greater than is going to add 10 to it. So this is Michaela's age. Now it says if the sum of their two ages is 55, how old is Michaela? So the sum is addition. So what we're going to do is take Jake, we're going to take Michaela, and we're going to set this equal to 55. So when I have this, it's going to have 3 over 2x plus 10 is equal to 55. I'm going to minus 10 on both sides. And then I'm going to get 3 over 2x is equal to 45. Now there's a few ways to solve this. You can, uh, easiest way, most efficient way is multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So these cancel and you're left with just x. And um, I want to do 45 times 2, which is 90, over 3, which means x is uh, 30. So now I have Jake's age, but that's not what the problem's asking for. It's asking what is Michaela's age. So I'm going to look at this problem, and where that variable x is, I'm going to actually plug in 30 for x. So I'm going to have 1 half of x, excuse me, 1 half of 30, plus 10. And so that will be 1 half of 30 is 15, plus 10 which means I'm going to get an age of Michaela, which is 25 years old. All right, so the next one, it's saying at Discovery Preschool, um, parents who have two students enrolled get a discount on the second child. The second child's tuition is tw uh, $10 less per day than the first child. 
if Tess has her two children enrolled for five days and um, her total bill is $200, how much does she pay um, each day for her second child to attend? So let's go ahead and look at this. First, let's focus on the first child. That's just going to be X. We don't know how much this child costs, but it's just the first one and nothing's being manipulated to it. Now the second child, it's the cost of the first child, but he's $10 cheaper, so we're going to minus. So that is the second. And that makes sense. We don't know what the first child costs, but I know the second child is just $10 less than the first child. Um, and we know that they attend for five days. So if I was going to write an expression for this, that for one day, it's going to be the cost of the first child plus the cost of the second child, which is $10 less than the first. That represents one day. But this is asking how much would it cost per child for five days. Now I know the total for five days is going to be $200. So well, how much does the first and the second cost? So let's go ahead and look at this. Let's combine all like terms here. I'm going to have 5 times 2x minus 10 is equal to 200. I'm then going to distribute this to both terms inside the parentheses to get 10x minus 50 equals 200. And now what we're going to do is add 50 on both sides. And that'll give us... 10x equals 250. When I divide both sides by 10, I will find out that the first child cost $25. Now the second child remembers 10 less than that. So the equation for him is going to look like 25 is the first child minus 10, because he's $10 cheaper, which will equal 15. So the second child will cost... $15 per day. All right. Now the next one's a money one. The money ones uh, are going to appear all the time. And it's basically a, a basic formula where we want to find out um, how much money he has in quarters, nickels, dimes, and it has to add up to a certain amount. So on a very basic format, we know that um, nickels are five cents. And I know if I add my dimes, those are 10 cents. And if I add my quarters, which are 25 cents per quarter, that's going to add up to $11.25. Now the thing is, we don't know how many nickels, dimes, and quarters we have. So let's go ahead and see what more information they give us. So it says she has three times as many nickels as dimes. So she has three times as many nickels. So nickels is equivalent to her dimes, but if she times her dimes by three, that's how many nickels she has. All right. And five more quarters than dimes. So if we want to figure out our quarters, we take her dimes and add five to it. Now what we want to do is see if we can plug in to our formula over here. If we can plug in anything. Well, I know nickels is equivalent to three times the amount of dimes, and I know quarters is dimes plus five. So we can actually plug in or substitute those values in to have 0 0.05 times three dimes plus 10 cents for the dimes plus 0.25 dimes plus five is equal to $11.25. Now there's a few things we can do here. We can treat these just like uh, decimals and distribute, which can get a little confusing. Or what we can do is we can go ahead and clear the decimal, do a decimal buster, by multiplying each term by 100. So let's go ahead and multiply each term. Now remember, terms are separated by plus and minus signs. So I'm going to multiply that by 100, this by 100, and this by 100. Now some people may be wondering why am I multiplying just this whole thing? Because there's a plus sign right here. 
It's because there's a multiplication sign separating these two, therefore it's still one whole term. So what this is going to give me is 50d, excuse me, 5 times 3d plus 10 times d plus 25 times d plus 5 is equal to 1125. So when I uh, go ahead and distribute, this is going to give me 15d plus 10d plus 25d plus 125 is equal to 1125. So now when I combine all my d's, I have 15, another 10, another 25. That'll give me 50d, because 15 plus 10 is 25, 25 plus 25 is 10, uh, 50. So 50d plus 125 is equal to 1,125 minus 125 on both sides, which will give me 50d is equal to 1,000. Now all I'm going to do is divide both sides by 50. These cancel, or reduce I should say, and 100 divided by 5 is 20, which means I have 20 dimes. So it says, um, the original question says, how much of each coin? So we got to go ahead and plug these back in. So I know the nickels is three times as many dimes. So that means nickels is 60. And I also know that quarters is her dimes, 20, but it's five more than her dimes. So for her quarters, she has 25. So there we have it. She has 20 dimes. 25 quarters, and 60 nickels. All right, guys. Well, that wraps up today. If you have any other questions, please feel free to email your teacher.